welcome to today's episode of the Balanced Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Lou Padian. I hope that you're doing well and are enjoying the podcast and the topics we've covered so far. These podcasts are released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to be kept up to date. So, in today's episode, we will be covering probably a diet that we've all heard of, and that is the Mediterranean diet. It is one of the ones that you see most of the hype around, and we will be looking in to see whether it is worth the hype today. So, what have we heard about it? What do you think its benefits are? Before we get into that, actually, I think it's really important that we discuss what actually led to us looking at the Mediterranean diet. So the Mediterranean diet isn't just a fad diet. Like when we speak about keto diets, when we talk about the Cambridge and things like that, they would become under fad, fad diets. But the Mediterranean diet isn't a fad diet with a specific start date. It's actually just a reflection on a traditional eating pattern of people living in countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea, which is how it has shaped their lives, their ag- agricultural practices and cultural values as well. So when we look at that, it's more dietary traditions of places like Crete, Greece, southern Italy, and it was actually first sort of looked into around the mid 20th century. And why did they look into it? Well, these countries displayed low rates of chronic diseases and a higher than average adult life expectancy, despite having limited access to healthcare, which is really interesting. As we know, healthcare and having access to healthcare is usually a good indicator for people's quality of life and life expectancy. So, considering they've got limited access to it, actually, they were having really good positive health outcomes. And that was actually linked into the way that they ate, but also the way that they lived. So what is the Mediterranean diet? So the Mediterranean diet centers around an abundance of delicious and nutritious foods as the way that they phrased it. And the diet is primarily based on sort of a plant-based eating plan and includes daily intake of things like whole grains, olive oil, fruits, vegetables, beans, and other legumes, nuts, herbs, spices, other foods like animal proteins, are eaten in smaller quantities and preferred animal protein being fish and seafood as they are based around the Mediterranean. So that's sort of how that has led there. When we look into it a bit deeper, there's a few different things that we'll cover here that sort of form it. And this is why it's not a fad. It's not very simplistic to follow. It's actually a lifestyle. And that's one of the things that we'll talk about later on that this isn't around a magic food. It isn't around having a certain amount of Uh, protein in your diet it's a combination of things and actually the way that they live their lives that actually has been associated so it's not looking at food specific sort of outcomes it's looking at dietary and lifestyle outcomes so fruits vegetables and whole grains these form the foundation of the diet providing essential vitamins minerals fiber to keep people energized and support their overall health healthy fats from extra virgin olive oil and it's a staple rich in monounsaturated fats which we've covered in previous episodes and also with the oily fish potentially within that as well you've got polyunsaturated fats in there as well which adds a lot of flavor to the food but also helps with satiety as well moderate fish and seafood these protein sources which you know if you've done the protein episodes really really useful but again omega-3s and i've just mentioned which help with sort of heart health and brain function limited red meat and processed foods and these sort of help sort of identify or really are underpinned by limiting the amount of unprocessed foods in the diet focusing on sorry ensuring that there's a lot of unprocessed foods in the diet making sure we've got a lot of whole food in the diet and we're trying to reduce the amount of processed foods in the diet there is an element of optional moderate wine consumption in there as well and for some people moderate wine consumption can be part of the plan but it's not mandatory and should be adapted to people's individual preferences of course and the research around this is really really interesting so research by Trika Polu et al 2000 apologies if I butchered that probably have highlights the historical and cultural significance of this dietary eating program emphasizing its roots in fresh seasonal ingredients and communal meals and again like i said it's not just about what we're eating it's how we're eating it the eating approach also highlights daily exercise as part of it having an active lifestyle and the actual beneficial social aspects of eating meals together so when again this is an episode i don't think i've done yet on blue zones which again is linked into this mediterranean sort of diet features into that and links into that again we're not looking at the food what actually is nutritionally within it we're talking about having daily activity in there the communal aspects and there's elements of that wine consumption as well that can link in there because again when people are consuming moderate amounts of alcohol within the diet it might it opens up more social aspects makes people more relaxed 
it allows people to have more communal meetings and enjoy the social benefits of that as well so it's a really really interesting concept and there's one of the things around this diet as well is that it does not spe specify portion sizes or specific amounts of those food it's up to the individual to decide exactly how much of the food they eat at each meal and again there might be some element of mindfulness within eating that point of satisfied not stuffed and again will vary on people's physical activity and body size as well so we're not saying you need to eat this amount of calories this amount of portions of these foods it's very much like have more of these foods in your diet potentially reduce these amount of foods incorporate more physical activity in there have more meals communally with other people and it's again it's a lifestyle not a diet so we've covered what it is where it or originates from but what are the benefits of this diet and why is it so highly regarded so a big part of it is the reduced risk of heart disease there is a massive study and one of the landmark studies was and it was on the pre diamed um, trial from 2013 it showed a significant reduction of around 70 percent in people in their cardiovascular events who followed the mediterranean diet compared to people who didn't which is massive it's a primary prevention trial including thousands of people all of which who had diabetes or other risk factors for heart disease and that the mediterranean diet supplemented with extra extra virgin olive oil or nuts without any fat or calorie restrictions reduced the rates of death from stroke by roughly about 30 percent as well which is massive the emphasis on healthy fats moderate protein sources and limited saturated fat is believed to be the contributing protective factor for this which again sort of links into what we sort of expect to see additionally there is improved cognitive function from undertaking this eating approach as well so research by gandhi et al 2015 suggests that the mediterranean diet may help protect against cognitive decline and dementia possibly due to the rich content of antioxidants and variety of nutrients and nutrition in there so again we're looking at people's not only improving their cardiovascular outcomes but also improving their cognitive function as they get older as well and this is why we might see that people actually have a higher quality of life are able to be more active more for for longer in these regions and it's a really interesting observation and obviously there's mechanisms underlying this underpinning this that sort of support it as well so improved cognitive function reduced risk of type 2 diabetes so studies indicate that the mediterranean diet may may help pre prevent and the, the, the development of type 2 diabetes and um, due to the focus on whole grains legumes and healthy fats in the diet this was also supported by the first study in the pre diamed study as well um, interestingly considering the diet is really high in polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats and actually fats in general there is a really positive correlation with overall weight management and whilst it's quite uh, specifically not a weight loss diet research suggests it can promote healthy weight management due to the emphasis on satiating whole foods and portion control as well so it's a really really interesting approach that actually whilst people might usually assume that a low fat diet is the best way to go to manage your calories actually having a diet higher in fat as long as those fats are monounsaturated polyunsaturated fats um, could be a useful tool and actually the mediterranean diet encourages a mindful approach for people which again having a communal meal allowing people to discuss foods but also encourages people to have a healthy relationship with food as well because it doesn't say foods are spe specifically off limits it's very much a balanced approach to healthier options or a more whole food unprocessed diet and um, other positive outcomes as well reduced risk of alzheimer's disease uh, improved mood and reduced risk of depression so again research here from 2017 explored the link between the mediterranean diet and mental health as the study suggests that the adherence to the mediterranean diet may be associated with a up to a 30 percent lower risk of depression again really impactful there huge numbers and could be really really beneficial for people long term in, in with improving their health as well there's improvements or linked improvements with gut health reduced risk of certain cancers and benefits to overall longevity and management potentially of chronic kidney disease as well so there's lots of positive health associations with this dietary approach but what might be some drawbacks so 
potentially, again, if people are eating in this way, there are no specific guidelines in regards to portion control or calories. And with such energy dense food options, if you're eating a lot of oily fish, you're eating a lot of nuts, seeds, olive oils, things like that, and potentially could put people into a calorie surplus. I know the research didn't suggest that, but on an individual basis, it might. So that is something to consider. Um, and as I said initially, I think it's really important to understand that the benefits are diet or approach specific rather than food specific. So whilst we know lots of these foods in general are really health promoting, the vast array of health benefits is down to the actual diet and the lifestyle approach. In my opinion, from my understanding of the research, it's not because of one single food. It's not because of one certain thing or one eating approach. It's down to the overall whole approach of this and it is a lifestyle so it's important not just to simply start taking a, a potentially a poor diet and just adding a heap full of olive oil or nuts to it it's better to actually have a look at your overall diet and going right so how can i add more whole foods in there how can i potentially add more polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats how can i have more fiber in there potentially how can i reduce from the processed foods and potentially have a look at a more plant-based version of living how can i increase my physical activity maybe focusing on having a more mindful and social approach to your eating habits so there's different things to take away from it and that's why i'd say it's not just a specific food it wouldn't be just specifically adding a load more fat to your diet that's not what we're talking about here the mediterranean diet is a whole approach there other things that might be things worth considering is accessibility and cost so it's potentially encouraging fresh, high quality ingredients like seafood, olive oil. They can be more expensive than the processed versions of those or processed alternatives. And accessibility, accessibility to some of these foods might be really difficult for some people. So it might be actually really difficult to undertake or at a great expense. Um, cultural adaptations. The traditional Mediterranean diet reflects the cultural norms of those regions. It may require some adaptations for people from different cultural food preferences or religious dietary restrictions as well so again you might need to amend it and with that might become some of the changes with the outcomes as well and i think it's important just to look at this and go right what are the sort of trends that we're seeing from this diet that are actually potentially linked to better health outcomes things like polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats from the diet taking a real big and big part of it plant-based version of living lots of legumes lots of fruits and vegetables in there and whole grains reduced amount of but not completely eliminated processed foods a good amount of oily fish in there but also the encouragement of physical activity and social aspects as well so there's huge things to focus on like i said my main takeaways of this are focus on the core principles so prioritizing fruits vegetables whole grains legumes healthier fats so those monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats and embracing the sort of the local approach of building that community eating together and eating foods that are locally sourced to you and being being part of the communal aspect as well making small swaps for this don't just jump in straight two two feet first into it don't just add a heap load of olive oil to your diet and an excess amount of calories in there and actually embrace this aspect if you're keen on exploring it because it is a really really worthwhile approach to eating we know there's lots of health benefits associated with this eating approach and it may not be for you it may not be for everyone but if this is something that you feel might be worth exploring for you, potentially you have risk of type 2 diabetes or heart disease in the family, then a more Mediterranean approach to your eating might be the best way for you. So the Mediterranean diet gets a thumbs up from me and is worthwhile exploring and lots and lots of positives to take away from it. So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode of the Balanced Approach podcast. If you have any questions, queries, or would like to reach out to me, please do. I am at Louis Padian Nutrition, which is at L-O-U-I-S-P-A-D-I-A-N Nutrition on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and all of the social media platforms. If you're looking for support in achieving your goals and living a healthier, happier, and more balanced life in the process, click the link below and inquire about working with me. Remember to subscribe to the Balanced Approach podcast wherever you're listening for more insightful episodes and I look forward to speaking to you soon.